this is a great country, but it can't function well if half of this society is clearly being discriminated against. It, it doesn't matter how much education you have, it doesn't matter you know, how much you attain, unfortunately discrimination still exists. We know that by 2050 the majority of women will be women of color. The issues that we know are real in discrimination and how that affects a woman, how that oppresses a woman, how it limits her opportunities whether it's healthcare, education, employment, we're gonna feel the pain of that, not just her, but we as a country. Discrimination is extremely prevalent uh, for people of color. Um, we see discrimination in education, um, in wage, um, in the wage gap that we see um, for women of color. Um, in fact, women of color make far less than their Caucasian counterparts and men of color. We see it also in the way that laws are enforced uh, and even in healthcare. Most people in the United States are familiar with personal bias and prejudice. Systemic or uh, institutional bias and prejudice manifests through policy and practices at the institutional level, and it also manifests when individuals express their individual bias or prejudice as an agent of that institution or with that institution. An example of systemic discrimination was addressed in a recent U.S. Department of Education report. It told us that 12% of black girls will experience a suspension during their public school uh, experience. 2% of white girls will experience suspension. And that is discrimination manifest for the black girls in that school. In the past, we focused efforts to address racism and racial justice on individuals. Those of us who are advocates have felt that is the approach we should take. But we've grown in our understanding of what's needed to address racism and racial justice more broadly, and we want to expand our work now to look at institutional racism. And by training individuals to address their own personal biases and um, interpersonal discrimination, that they can take what they learn as individuals into the institutions and structures in which they live and work and change them as well. People's biases have now played into a variety of things that limit women and therefore hamper our families and our communities. So for example, things like discrimination on the job, being able to have equal pay for equal work is a major issue for us and it has been for decades. We're very focused on encouraging the minimum wage to be increased because women disproportionately receive minimum wages for the work that they do. We've often had problems as it relates to being able to get mortgages and loans, whether it's for something as simple as a car or being able to go to school. These are factors that affect the quality of life for women. And the YWCA has always been in the forefront of this particular movement. The YWCA works to empower women and girls in several ways. We engage in direct service to meet immediate needs. That includes crisis intervention as well as prevention-oriented programming. We also educate the community on issues that are relevant both locally and nationally. And we engage in public policy advocacy to make systemic change. The impact we create in our community come in many ways. It could mean women leaving abusive relationships, landing employment, finding permanent housing, and girls taking leadership roles, and also um, seniors living healthy lives. All too often, women of color are faced with the negative impacts of their gender, their race, as well as the lack of economic parity. And each of these items, um, even separately, are challenging, but certainly when you face all three, it creates an uneven playing field that makes it nearly impossible for you to be successful. Well, it is no doubt a huge problem, but it's not insurmountable, and if we keep looking at it as if the problem is so large we can never um, attack it, then we won't do anything, we won't make any progress. So I think we, first of all, have to create a commitment in people. We have to provide information. We have to provide stories that touch people and help make the problems real for those who don't believe it exists. 
I wish we had um, you know, come further along the trajectory uh, as it relates to creating an equal society for all and achieving our mission of, of peace, freedom, dignity, and justice for all. But sadly, we have a long way to go on both ends, whether it be racism and sexism. We have so much more work to do. We have so many problems that everyone agrees need to be addressed. And the best way to address it, I think, is through every voice counting. The best way for voices to count is to vote. The YWCA has been essential in trying to get the range of people in this country to vote so that we can address issues of gender inequality, racial discrimination, bias against immigrants, prejudice against uh, the LGBTQ uh, population, all of the things that really concern us on a day-to-day -day basis are things where we need to weigh in with our vote. By 2050, I believe it is, over half of the women in the country will be women of color. So I think if we don't address this issue, we will go into that period in our history with um, many of the same problems which will have grown exponentially just because of the numbers of people who will be impacted by racism and sexism and, and uh, other social justice problems. So I think that the YWCA in particular is um, really well situated to help us address these issues and concerns before we get to that point. YWCA is on a mission, eliminating racism, empowering women. Join us.